everybody and welcome back the men and people in this race and horses and children and bears have finally come out of their coma it is a great day here in Boystown, Illinois we are at RuPaul's Drag Strip it is uh you know the only word I can come up to describe today is fabulous because it is fabulous that we are here to start off the playoffs of the Diddler Cup Racing Series, the first ever playoffs here in 2018, the first race of the first playoffs. My name is Chip Chapman. Back after several weeks is Lightning Lord Shivers. Lord, it is good to be back here. Hello. Yes, we are back. It is time for the best part of the season. We've been through 14 incredible stock Driver, car auto races all this season. But you ain't seen shit yet. Because now this is the inaugural Diddler Cup playoffs. You could take every other playoffs in any other sport, and you could just tell it to go fuck itself for a little while. Pretty much. I mean, only for a little while. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna want some of them back eventually. I mean, you can tell you can tell the college football playoff committee to go fuck himself. You can tell you can tell Stanley Cup himself. So I'm sure that's a person, Lord Stanley Cup. That's his name. You can tell him to go fuck himself. But I think it's got like an E at the end of fuck because it's Canadian. Um, Roham. Roham, indeed. You can tell. You can tell. Uh, all, all, the, all them 65,000 teams that make it in the college basketball, you can tell them to go fuck themselves. You can tell them to go fuck themselves at a buzz, while a buzzer's ringing because they're loving their buzzer beaters, all right? You can tell baseball to fuck himself, but in an American way, of course, because, you know, it's American pastime. Removing my hat for that one. Uh, That's right. And, uh,. But you know who you don't tell to fuck themselves? These 32 drivers, and specifically the 16 of them who have qualified for the playoffs. Damn! We got a huge race for you today. It is a brilliant, brilliant race here in Boystown, Illinois. It is, it is brightly colored. It is just every color of the rainbow is on display. No doubt because these fans are here to support their drivers and all of the all of the color, all of the pride they have. Pride seems to be the important word here. The pride they have in their drivers as they That's support right. them here. That's right. And of course, it's the pride of France that is on the pole position. Defended Diddler Cup Race and Series champion Jean-Paul Henri on the pole. Man, this he, guy's quick. He is the he is the he is the top points winner. Uh, he is that he is he is top of the point standings of drivers that did not make that did not win a single race this year, and I mean he's done everything but get the win. But you know what? Good enough to get him in the playoffs. We had three drivers who did not win, and that of course is because we had uh, I sorry we had uh, we had a couple drivers. I'm sorry we had, we had a couple drivers. I think double it up to double it up today. Uh, double it up this year. I believe we had uh, both uh, Giacomo Giacomo. And, and alcohol. alcohol. Excuse me. That's yes, right. I'm sorry. War so, Machine, so, Machine Racing leads the regular season in terms of race victories, but now you just got to scrap all that. We basically restarted from scratch, and the top 12 much. drivers will advance to the next round. And four more drivers' hopes after the next handful of races. Three well, races, yep. We're going here. Yeah. We're going back to the desolate ellipse in our next race. And then we will announce, of course, pretty soon. I believe uh, it has not been officially announced, but we are heading back to the actual roads of South Tucson for that third race of the first round, this round of 16. And after that, here's how it works. After that, we got we 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 uh we shuffle. We, the points are going to be awarded just like they always are. If you get a win and you're in the playoffs, you automatically make it to the next round. Don't matter at that. You're already in. You're into the next round if you get a win. So that's going to be things that these 16 drivers are going to be looking for. Points are going to be accumulated just like they always are. And then after three more races, we chop off the bottom four. They're, they're, they're out of it. The 12 get their points readjusted, as you see on the bottom of your screen. Everybody who made the playoffs, their points are at 4,000, plus uh, some bonus points that we have, uh, I believe, explained on our website. Too much math right now for, for, my, for my brain and for, of course, the brains of these drivers, which have just come out of comas after the pointless Rex Travaganza. Yeah, I think some of them are still feeling a little bit of uh, uh, side effects from it. I mean, when you uh, when you spend a couple of weeks inside a medical induced coma, uh, it kind of makes you a little groggy when you wake up. Let's just say. Well, I think groggy is uh, is is always a good way to race. 
That's my That's understanding. Right. I, I used to just drive groggy all the time, you know, through the night. We do it from race to race all the time. That's right. That's right. I mean, sometimes you doze off, and sometimes, you know, they, they should see you coming up behind them with no brakes. Exactly. And I'm sorry. I had my lights on. Even if I didn't, look, I'm in the other lane, okay? I think I have a control of this car. I wasn't swerving. I was clearly in the wrong lane, coming at incoming traffic, okay? It ain't my fault. Roll ham. Roll ham, indeed. I think it is time to talk about the 32 drivers that we've been familiar with for the first 14 races, and we'll go through the field right now as we get to our starting grid. I think it is time to go ahead and tell you about how they are rolling, how they are starting up here. The starting grid of the CoverGirl 500, a three-mile oval, super speed way to get things started. Jean-Paul Henri is a playoff car. He is on the pole with El Matador Toto Rosanna. Good qualifying effort for the number 75. On road two, a pair of playoff contenders. Giacomo Giacomo, two wins this season. Paul Walker in that double zero Niles Arby's car. Agent Toby Keith and Jim Blossoms, a late playoff addition after winning in Brooklyn. Jim Blossoms takes the 41 into the playoffs. Joe John Winchester and Cobb Salad, pair of ATF Bureau cars, pair of playoff contenders. They start things off on row four. Will they stay in sync? Ennio Sperini and Mr. Naga's most glorious driver. Mr. Naga's most glorious driver, winner of our Gumboos, Paul and Rex Stravaganza. Neither of them in the playoffs this year. Fat Daryl and Stumpy Lane, unfortunately, missing out on the playoffs as well. Fat Daryl came ever so closely uh, on the last race of the regular season. Jeff Shanice, he's racing in, in the playoffs as a independent driver as the Jeff's Chinese car, number 38, is in there. As is Morris Mayfield in that number 69 car. Nice! And all alcohol, two wins for him. He's on row eight. Dirk Tanaka and Kevin Boner Pillman, a pair of slap dongs there. They are on row nine. Pair of playoff contenders. They won back-to-back -back races. Harry Gunt. And Big Daddy Thibodeau. Thibodeau right behind the Slap Dong boys. He's another playoff contender. On row 11, it is Jeff Gordon, the horse, in that number 8 gunk car. And Doug Pork, a rookie, in the Good Grave 83 car. On row 12, it's Richard Blood and Vitalik Kriptoff. Richard Blood making it in on points. He is a playoff contender on row 12. On row 13, Bucket Dushine and Reverend Pastor Chavez. We talked about going to the actual roads of South Tucson. That's how Reverend Pastor Chavez got in. He won that race. Boo with Jessup in the number 22 HCL car. And Nikolai, the Soviet driving bear in that number two. Russian bears to you, Dodge Stratus. And 542 Norman and Wu Ba Bala towards the back of the field. Neither of them in the playoffs this year. But we'll see how it goes. And in the final row, it is Petrol Topoff in that number 90 car. He's a playoff contender. Don't you forget about that. And Ricky Walton in the 32. Pair of playoff contenders actually in that one. So, uh... Going to be interesting to see how they all line up. Again, uh, Lloyd, you know, it, it's a matter of you, you You can't win. I was about to say you can't win in this race, but you sure can lose it. I think it actually works the other way. If you win this race, you're into the next round. That's right. But, but you don't I, want I don't to take too many chances early on. Yeah, you I, want you to be at the, end of the end of the race. Exactly. You gotta. You, you want to keep the car together here, and on a super speedway like this one, we know there's going to be a lot of fast laps. There's going to be a lot of drafting. I think. I think we maybe are going to have to just. You know, we might be seeing some conservative driving from some of these cars. Who <laughs> we fucking kidding, Lord? They're going to be driving like assholes. Man, that's right. The only way to drive. I mean, that's, that's what I say. That, that's the way I drove to all my championships, and that's the way you got to drive if you want to win a championship. Remember, it's the playoffs. These drivers are going to ratchet up the intensity. It just means more. Exactly. More of everything. More ham, more racing, more beef. More calories. Food. More calories, absolutely. These drivers are going to have to take on these calories, which, again, unfortunate for the Adjective Foods team, they missed out completely in the playoffs. But we're going to see how this works. I mean, uh, on the surface, we're seeing Jean-Paul Henri coming on late in the season. You know, had a bit of trouble. This will be his third pole on the year. Just a matter of him trying to keep it at the front of the pack. Can he do it? Can he get the win when it matters that puts him into the next round? I think so. You know, the speed's been there all season long, and I feel like Jean-Paul Henri is, is on the cusp of a breakthrough here in these uh, – and these playoffs. 
And, and of uh, course, if, yeah, go ahead. if he dominates, if he goes through and wins this race today from the pole position, I mean, it's very rare. You see some drop, some tracks lend itself to win it from pole position. Others don't. And for John Paul Henry, I feel like his time is coming. This is about the point in the season this time last year where we were starting to come into form. Mm -hmm. and perhaps, uh, perhaps in this playoff format, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a different format, but I mean, it's still the thing. It's still the thing that, uh, you know, we we saw that last year. Jean-Paul Henri came on so strong in the later, latter half of the season. We got eight races to go, and he wants to make all those eight races matter. He doesn't want to go out after three or go out after two. Uh, he wants to make it completely matter to him. Uh, and, of course, we see right behind him, Giacomo Giacomo, his teammate, Paul Alcohol, behind him, War Machine Racing. For, for, for a pair of Fords in that race. They are they are really something, and they are just going to be... you got a feeling that they're just going to keep being dominant from from this season and seasons to come. They've got an absolute swagger, and they got an absolute strutter in their step. I tell you, folks. <laughs> they do. They do. I think the swagger comes from Giacomo Giacomo, and the strutter comes from Paul Alcohol in the back. I think that's kind of the uh, the uh, the unofficial nicknames they've been given. Uh, I'm gonna ask you, Lord. Anybody else of the playoff sixteen that that you you think we should be keeping our eyes on today? Oh, man, I know I'm putting it on the spot here, but I gotta I gotta see. It's it's a it's a tough call here, but I tell you what. I tell you, the way War Machine racing, they've just been winning so many races, and i got to feel like this may be the year that Paul Alcohol gets it done and finishes the season. But I look towards those Ditsy Wimmer Incorporated mm -hmm. cars. I look towards John Paul Henry, and I look towards Richard Blood, and I feel like, you know, I feel like Richard Blood, we know he hasn't won a race as quick mm -hmm. as he's been, but maybe this playoff format you know, maybe, just maybe, it would just be the damnedest thing if he just goes the whole thing, advances without winning the race all the way to the final, and then wins the last race of the season. I mean, man, it would that be something? Shit. I can't say if that would happen or not, but man, that would be something just to see him advance in that sort of way. It's possible. He's just got to stay at the front of the pack and keep himself in contention and keep the car together. He, we've seen he's got the ability to. He just hasn't had the ability to finish it. But I think the time has come to, uh, of course, thank the Lord. And uh, we're going to go ahead to our race prayer. Um, there is a beautiful, beautiful, very tall, very uh, athletic-looking lady. Uh, it's going to be given the uh, the prayer, I believe. Uh, I didn't get her name, but uh, let's go ahead and go down to her. Yes. Stroll down the runway. Another payday. Cover magazines. And when they see me, they want to be me. I am a fantasy. Cover girl, put the base in your walk. Head to toe, let your whole body walk. Cover girl, put your base in your walk. Head to toe, let your body walk. To Grumman's Chinese, red carpet TV, ballet my limousine, box office sweetie. An Oscar nominee, now watch me snatch trophies. Cover girl, put the base in your walk. Head to toe, let your whole body talk. Cover girl, put your base in your walk, head to toe, let your whole body talk. Walk, now walk, walk, now walk. Amen. Amen, indeed. I mean, that's uh, that's you know, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with other religions, but that is that is that is quite that is quite the uh, the, the it's catchy very prayer. uplifting. It's very uplifting, folks. It I is. Tell you. It's very catchy too. And um, well, I think the time has come. We are getting ready to get things going. I believe we are going to go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and go down to uh, the, our, our our race marshal who is uh, ready to give the, those not quite famous words in motorsports, but the ones that kind of just get the point across. Uh, so I'll go ahead and go down to them now. All right. <clears throat> Thirty-two queens stand before me. Ladies, this is your last chance to impress me and save yourself from elimination. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck and don't fuck it up. They, they say lip, lip sync? I, I mean, it's kind of like putting your foot to the firewall. It's kind of like it. 
I, 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 I guess I don't. I mean, I all right. I mean, I used to I used to lip sync with the I used to like make the car noise of my mouth back when I was four years old. Oh yeah, first okay. Learned how, first learned how to smoke my first Marlboro cigarettes. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now all I got right. so, so like you're talking about like just going kind of thing like that. That's what we're talking. Oh yeah. About. Yeah. Oh that, yeah, of course. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. May have uh, may have snuck in a couple of drives around the uh, the seven bit Of course, yeah. Just put them, now, now here, put we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about lip syncing and making sounds with your mouth. What kind of sound would you make if you had to make a machine gun noise? What would it sound like? <laughs> All right, that's a good one. I want to. I want to. I'd love if we had more people in this booth. I'd love to hear with them. But you know, I always feel. I always feel like you know so much about somebody. <laughs> When you hear what their uh, what their machine gun noise sound like. Mine was always just <laughs> and everybody has their own. That's what I love about it. It's kind of like what's your own perfect pizza toppings, or 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 how you like to be pleasured uh, by by a woman or man. You know, everyone's got their own sort of twist and turns and how it goes. You know, everybody's that's got right. their own machine gun noise, and that's what I think about. Well, we are seeing this beautiful, beautiful super speedway uh, three mile oval. And that's, uh, that's right. gonna leave a. That looks like there's not that wide of a track, Lord. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be tightly packed, but there's gonna be a lot of speed. What does that mean for these drivers? It means you gotta pick a lane here, and of course, in this race, it's all about whether or not you're gonna be a top or a bottom. Yeah. That's right. If you're if you're gonna run the high lane, you gotta commit to be the the high lane. You gotta run the top. If if you're gonna stay down at the bottom, you gotta commit to being a bottom. Now we've seen a couple switches out there, drivers that feel comfortable running on the low line or the high line. But to be honest, I feel like most of these drivers, you know, they're gonna feel they're actually gonna default to running one lane or the other. And that's, of course, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's you, really don't want, you don't want to swing both ways too necessary unless you absolutely have to on this track. We're seeing the pace car is off. Jean-Paul Henri going to lead them around to the green flag. And I think it is time to get the playoff started. I am ready, Lord. Here we go. <laughs> and let's go. go. It, let it, it's a goddamn auto race. Auto race. It's let's a goddamn go. playoff auto race. And look how spread apart they are. They are just spreading. And looking to penetrate. Look at all of these cars just look going around that. that track. They're already going five wide. Look at all that space they got on this big old track. Jean-Paul Henri. Sometimes just for the failing out process, you see these drivers maybe going one or even two wide, maybe three wide after a little bit of stretching. But I tell you, they just got all five up in there. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, they didn't even have to just like ease themselves into this one. They just straight up went for it. And we're seeing a lot of cars just kind of uh, almost tapping the brakes on those turns. Look at how banked those turns are. Jesus, I tell you what, 40 degrees of banking. That is steeper. Oh, we got trouble. Oh, oh, we, we got, got trouble go. already. Oh, oh, oh we got a wreck. Who is involved in it? They're doing the Pulling fork in the out. garbage disposal. They're doing the fork in the garbage disposal. Ding, 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 ding. It's like Bucket Dushan was involved in it. We're not sure exactly. We saw a wreck. Doug Pork is in the back. Herrick Gunt, 542 Norman. Oh, Big Daddy Thibodeau involved in that one, maybe. Oh, it's another, another We're not sure. We are, we are on caution. Caution is out. We're going to go ahead and find out what in the hell just happened. But the oh, pace man. car is back on it, and we're going to go ahead and see. Jean-Paul Henri is still the leader, but we're going to go ahead and see who is making their way to pit road as, uh, you know, it didn't look like that much needed to be cleaned up. But, uh, man, they, they got into it quickly. And it looks like it was Buck. Again, we're looking at the ones that were in the back of the pack because obviously they got to get back onto the uh, onto the pace. But we're going to keep an eye right now. We're going to look at, at Jim Blossoms right now. Looking at Jim Blossoms at 41. Plasma Train independently run Ford Pinto. One of the two independent drivers to make it into the playoffs. We're going to see as they come around if any of these cars are... Oh, man, look at all that smoke. And we're seeing a couple of cars. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, I think we're seeing the ones that were involved in that wreck, and it does not look like any playoff cars involved. That is Nikolai, the Soviet driving bear. That is uh, in the number two. That is 542 Norman in the number 13. Again, we saw... Now, I tell you what. Nikolai, the Soviet driving bear, he was very popular when the series came by here and set up shop this weekend because they were all looking to see the bear. Yeah, and, they, uh, love, they, love, they love themselves a good bear over here in Boystown. No doubt about it, but uh, we're seeing Doug Pork. Uh, not a lot of porking being done there. Bucket Dushan, as we mentioned, 
and Harry Gunt, uh, the Ham Bandit, unfortunately. Looks like Big Daddy Thibodeau seemed to avoid that one. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these cars and see if they had any sort of damage that we could see. I'm not even seeing that much damage on these cars as we're going around and looking at them. It just looks like there was a bit of a, a bit of a, a wreck that maybe somehow avoided everybody from getting too, uh, too caught up in it. We're going to find out exactly what's happening, but... Right now, the pace car still leading them out there. Three laps in of the six to seven lap race. It is, uh, you know, it, it, it's it, it's a bit of chaos. And now they're going to go ahead and line up single file and restart. Is that going to be easier or, or is that going to be harder for these cars, Lloyd? I think it'll settle them out a bit. I, I think that, I think what you saw was just a case of drivers getting caught up in the moment. You know, this is a 67 lap race mm -hmm. and uh, they were trying to, they were trying to act like this was the last lap of the race, which of course is always a sound strategy, especially for the fans' enjoyment. Yeah, exactly. We love seeing that. And, uh, you know, don't get, me, don't get me wrong. That was five cars who are not involved in the playoffs jockeying for what ended up being that wreck. Could it have been some bad equipment? Could it have been just some trouble with, the, with, their, with their respective cars? It could have been. Absolutely it could have been. However, don't forget, these guys are fighting for 17th place, basically. It's a battle of the trenches at the bottom as well. You know, the, the higher you get up, in, even, even if you're not in the playoffs, you want to make a, a good impression for any potential suitors in the next se uh, for next season. Maybe get yourself a better ride, get yourself some funding, a new sponsor. These drivers want to impress, and, you know, it just shows they're, all 32 guys in this, all 32 cars in this race have something to race for. That's right. We're hearing lots of uh, civil season rumors circulating around the garages here, uh, being spread throughout, uh, throughout various uh, Usenet groups and uh, Facebook posts, um, all that all, all that good kind of stuff here. You know, apart from the basic level insults of uh, of other of drivers commenting and calling each other various slurs on Facebook, you know that that happens every now and then. Yeah, no doubt about it. And we're seeing, yeah, it looks like no car has uh, had to go to the trailer for that. They're all kind of lined up again. Looks like we're gonna go ahead and get things started in just a few. I'm surprised. The pace, the pace car is still on there, <clears throat> so it looks like this might be uh, no. Pace car still got the lights on, so it looks like we're gonna be going around one more time. And look at this beautiful racetrack, just beautiful greenery. You know, if there's grass on the field, we are gonna play ball. I don't know what that means. I just was written down for me. It sounded better mm -hmm. in my head, but uh, it's like the pace car. As uh, again, you know, we're gonna go ahead and see when we get to lap five. If, uh, Lee Corso if, uh, seems to be distracted by the uh, by the rainbow flashing lights here. Maybe that's what it is. I don't understand it, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see. But I mean, it, again, it might be affecting the fuel window here because we got all these cars who have obviously not pitted. It's still early in the race. It's just going to move that fuel window. It's going to move move those green flag pit stop uh, times a little bit further down. You know, a six to seven lap race. You're not going to go that whole race on a single tank of fuel. That's right. You, you just uh, you can't just power your way through the bottom groove of the racetrack the whole no, time. No, not at all. Sometimes, no, it, it gets tiresome, and you got to have the stamina to do that. No doubt about that, you do. And uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> seeing Jean Paul Henri leading this pack as they come around. We have not hit lap five yet. And we're coming around a straightaway, and we're seeing those banked turns, those really deep grooves. You just got to get really deep and in there and root yourself around and then come out clean. And that's the problem. Coming out clean on those straightaways is a tough thing, and we saw that's exactly where the wreck happened. It's, uh, you know, you just kind of get, you get in deep, and you just got to be able to pull out without a problem. Yeah, lights are off, so this is going to be the last lap under caution. All right, there we go. We got the signal that they're going to be coming in. And, uh, of course, any of spring, of course, it's all up to John Paul Henry. He's got to make a good, clean restart here. He can't spin the tires or else he's going to get ran from behind. Yeah, you don't want that to it's happen. Worst case. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, and that's the thing. You don't want a little bit of mud on the tires. I think Brad Paisley's got it right in that case. Uh but uh, you know, nonetheless, I think that's uh, and that—that's just why you gotta clean the tires. You gotta clean the tires before you make the start here. See them kind of revving up, kind of shimmying back and forth here. Just cleaning the tires are, yeah. off, cleaning all the gunk off of there, cause there's 
Nothing worse than pulling up, pulling second gear, and just all of a sudden there's just gunk all over the place. Yeah, you gotta just you gotta just have a clean you gotta have a clean pull out in this case. And uh, speaking of gunk, we're looking at that Jeff Gordon the horse. A lot of rumors surrounding Jeff Gordon the horse um, and, and, and the future of the eight team and uh, gunk as a sponsor and, and just that independent driver. I mean, you know, we, we can't confirm or deny any rumors because he's a horse. Uh, we can't get any sort of comment. I mean, I think he just kind of clomps his, clomps his hoof a certain number of times, but we don't know if he's saying yes or no. We can tell him one for yes, two for no. I don't think he understands he's a horse. <laughs> didn't expect, hey, didn't expect buddy, that one to get you there, Lloyd. Buddy, buddy, that's okay. I don't think most of these fans were expecting a horse to show up. I think they were expecting a bear to show up. A few yeah. bears. They got at least one. But a horse, man, that's something well, entirely they're, they're, all, they're all in favor of something to be ridden. And But there you're seeing something that usually gets ridden, riding something else. I guess that's the whole top-bottom uh, uh, issue of the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about, okay, pace car. Looks like it's going to go ahead. Yeah, Corso is taking it to pit road. Oh, he might just hit that damn barrier. Take take it a little while. Take the turn a little wider, Lee. Jesus fucking Christ, man. All right, well, we are five laps in the books, and we're going to get our first restart of the day. Let's get the wide angle. Go ahead and crank it up as these mighty machines go to green flag racing. And we're going to go ahead and see as they come around this long stretch. It is long, strong, and bound to get its friction on. Jean-Paul Henri proving he's a top. <clears throat> but he is getting past. The Stittler Cup Racing Series. But look at this, Anio Sprini. Look at how wide the turns here. Yeah, the straights are long, but there's a lot of uh, longitudinal girth to this track. Yeah, there are. And, oh, we're seeing a lot of movement. Look at that 69 car opts to be a nice. bottom. Yes, that's right. He's he's going to the bottom lane. He just wants to reduce the the. He, there's a there's a big lane forming the bottoms here. And and with, to be honest, a lot of people didn't expect so many drivers to be running the top groove. They no, just suspected that there weren't any drivers that actually were were willing to run the top. And that's interesting. I'm looking at and it's Morris Mayfield in a whole pack. Of file. Uh, he's right behind uh, uh, Jeff Gordon. The horse he's got he's got Paul Walker in front of him. Fat Daryl's in that line too. I notice what they're doing is. They're trying to stay off that high bank on the turn. They're not. Th th maybe the come down uh, just off off the turn isn't as as uh, as hard. And I'm not sure if that's a strategy or if it's just trying to keep the car together. If they're just worried about how the car is handling it. Yeah, you can't bask Ooh, in the afterglow of this. Oh, oh goodness, yeah. Paul you alcohol can't. just cut in front of Wu Bai Bali to <sighs> take that low line, and you can see how much these cars are wobbling. They are wobble, baby, wobble, baby. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. They are just, whoa, four wide. And I tell you what, these cars are a lot of movement coming here. In. Yeah, cars are real loose coming in at turns one and three. Now, I don't know if that's something that's going to be affected when they go into the pits, but Ennio Sperini looking to be, uh, looking to, uh, taking that lead, and he is just opening it up. He is just opening wide, just spreading it apart uh, between him and Agent Toby Keith. Ennio Sperini had a pretty uh, rough, Rough go at the regular season. Uh, a win for Ennio Spirina, who's taken on a mentorship role of South Tucson Youth Motorsports, would really be just a, 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 a good thing to see. You know, he signed on with South Tucson Motorsports. He's going to be their uh, their instructor, uh, as far as we know, uh, for years to come. But uh, it's just nice to see him get uh, be able to focus on uh, on winning races. And man, that'd be cool to see him win this there. Yeah, of course, he told me before the start of the race there were a lot of problems with the car during time trials and uh, perhaps during the race. He's having a lot of problems with his car. I mean, that's what he told me, but uh, he's uh, driving out to a pretty comfortable lead. And none of these cars he really is. feel settled here on this three-mile super speedway. We're seeing a bit of a gap starting to fill as we were focusing in on Jeff Shanice. Went to the wide angle, but we are seeing uh, Shanice looking pretty good. He is sitting in ninth place. Again, an independent driver. Uh, independent does not have a race team to, to uh, support. Again, may or in, may not have killed a man. May or may not have killed a man on multiple occasions. But he is uh, he's looking pretty good. He's running in the top ten right now in this race, and uh, I think he, he might actually be a, he might be a contender. You know, that's the thing. Once you get into the playoffs, everything kind of gets condensed, and you get your points based on how you're doing. And uh, I think you know he's got a good 
Like they say, any man with two hands and four wheels can fight. Oh, looks like Joe John Winchester just grazed the wall. Let's keep an eye on what's going on there in that 47 car. Oh, 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 a lot oh, of sparks. Oh, man. A lot of oh. paint flying there. I don't know if that's enough to oh, damage it. the car. Oh, man. I don't know if he had a tire going down there or what, but I'll tell you what, you pancake the right side of the car that, that hard. That's going to disturb the air around the other side of the car. It's going to make it very difficult to drive. We're seeing. Look at how much room these cars have to ride on this track yeah. as we went long yeah. for a second. We're going to keep an eye on that Just Guns 4-7 to seven car, that camo, that, uh, that, that Armored Green car that is basically the de facto leader of ATF Bureau and one of their two cars in the playoffs. The other one, 21, Cobb Salad, who was running in seventh place, a rookie, looking really good here. Winchester not looking pretty good. He is just dropping back, getting past. That's Kevin Boner Pillman and Wuba Bala looking to pass him as well. May be trouble for that playoff hopeful and and a, and a, and a kid who, uh, I say a kid, he's he's. He's basically a grown-ass man at this point. Uh, we've just known him for his whole life because of his father, too. Uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, that's gonna, he came so close last season to winning the championship that it's unfortunate. Oh, we got problems here. Oh, we got a wreck. Oh, it's it's uh, Smiley Van Vuren. I don't think anybody else was involved in that. We're not sure what happened. We're under oh, caution. Yeah, oh. Joe John Winchester took it into the took it into the pits, but it looks like Smiley Van Vuren got turned around on lap 12. Oh my goodness! So now that's our second caution of this race. Damn, man! I tell you, I'm, I'm gonna see the replay of this. I, it kind of looked like, from what I could see from outside the racetrack. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Maybe you just. Got a little bit out of shape here. These cars, I'll tell you what, they are designed to go, they're set up to go as fast as hell and run as loose as possible. And it wouldn't surprise me if the back end just snapped around on him on a bit. Maybe. We're going to have to go choked see. On. Have to cuss, course, go, yeah, he may have choked on a bone. Exactly what you're saying. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's what happens when you eat the bones. But nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the fans that I was speaking to here also said that they were having trouble choking on the bone there as well. And look at you this. We're seeing all the cars, all the cars coming to pit road. Go. Oh, boy. This look is going to get stupid as hell. This is absolutely going to get stupid as hell. Look at this. Here. Has anybody stayed out? I don't fucking think so. This is going to be really interesting. As, uh, let's black. just go ahead and cycle through anybody. Is anybody staying out there? Well, we're somehow... Somehow, everybody is out in pit road. Oh, this is going to be problems. That's, oh, Jesus Christ, Reverend oh, Pastor Chavez just got hit. As he was leaving pit road, he got hit by one of the Russians, I oh, think. Oh, no. That no. was the Graybits car. Holy oh. shit, what in the fuck is happening? Oh, my God. We got, we got pit crew members getting bounced over. We got them being run over. And it looks like, it looks like we may have seen, now it looks like Enios Barina is still leading this race, but fucking hell. Uh, looks like Reverend Pastor Chavez seems to have got off of pit road all right. I mean, he got spun around, but he was able to rat the car. Winchester still on this track. I don't know what the hell is happening there. Yeah, I'm hoping that they took a little bit of time to just take down the sides of that car and make sure it runs a little bit smoother because that's the thing. When you run a track like this, it's important not to get the car beat up. At a short track where outright top speed isn't as important, you know, you can yeah. afford to have the whole... You can have pretty much... You can drive around with a roll cage and four wheels if you want it. And there's some really strange fun. things happening, by the way. I'm not entirely certain what's going on. I think they're all trying to figure out which fucking order they're supposed to be running in. Everybody's <laughs> arguing which way should they be going where. We got just oh. a pack of people and a pace car, and they ain't even trying to line up single file. Fucking hell, what is happening here? I don't know what's happening here, but I enjoy it. Oh, my it. God. I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> the fans in attendance are waving their big old... It looks like we got a lot of Morris Mayfield fans here. They're waving their number 69 banners, which are very nice. They are very nice, and uh, fucking what is even happening? Agent Toby keeps trying to just get... Fucking what in the world? I feel like I need to just go to the wide angle at this point. Not to, not to channel Hogan versus Flair, but we, we go to the wide angle. Because what the fuck is happening? Obviously, Toby's thinking... 
I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I don't know what the hell he's thinking exactly. But we yeah. are seeing Jesus Christ. And I'll tell what you what. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I went down to concession stands here. There were a lot of interesting, uh, interesting. Uh, I mean, that were mostly kind of like hot dog shaped snacks. But then, uh, but then I saw the uh, Smoocher Z's Sneaky Frozen Yogurt. Oh, that's really? there at the concession stand. Yeah, it's Smoocher Z's Sneaky Frozen Yogurt, and it comes in it comes in very different flavors here. And it says also it's high in sodium and protein content. Of course, interesting. Oh. And what's that called again? It's a uh, Smoocher Z's Sneaky Frozen Yogurt. It's down there, uh, right under uh, section uh, two twelve, down there on the uh, the main grandstand. I see. All right, I'm gonna go out to check it out there. I know they had some of the. Uh... You know they had a, uh, they had a lot of uh, yogurt based. Uh, uh, they had a, a great like they had like the frozen yogurt, and they just had um, they had. Yeah, I, I saw I saw all the dessert spots as well. I know they had a uh, they had the, uh, the 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 Michelle Visage Sunday, which is two gigantic scoops of ice cream just drizzled in chocolate sauce, and just you know. And you can just you can just get and they just grab like they grab a whole bunch of like it's not like whipped cream it's like it's but it's a little bit like it's like cream that hasn't been quite whipped but it's still sweet and it's it's like sugary and they just kind of throw a batch of that right on those two scoops of ice cream. Yeah, and of course, uh, and of course, there's like warm stuff to eat as well. You got a uh, you got some fine uh, North Alaskan seafood up there. It, it's it's uh it's really an interesting dish, the Alaska Thunderfuck. The Alaskan what? The Alaska Thunderfuck. <laughs> I think I had one of those the other day. Man, that's delicious. Not entirely yeah. sure, but and, you know. and I tell you, and I tell you what, when you're when you're uninterested <laughs> in expensive pink keyboards, um, sometimes you just want to get go down the bar and order yourself a Mister Destructoid. Oh yeah, of course. That's a uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a cup full of ice. You get you pour yourself some vodka, some snaps, some strawberry cream liqueur. You mix it all together and you splash it down with some Sprite. That's the Mister Destructoid for those of you who are uninterested in expensive keyboards. Oh no, I see. I understand then. That's unfortunate. The exp there you go. I mean, I I'm not interested. I have no idea. I, that gives you an idea of how fucking. Fucking out of this, I am. I completely forgot about my. He's had too many. He said he's had too many Mister Destructoids. I know I've had we, too many Mister Destructoids myself. Ain't interesting. I we was ain't honestly interesting. wondering what the fuck you were just talking about, and then I look again and I go, "Okay, I know exactly what the it fuck you're talking had, about." Must have had a sneaky frozen yogurt. That's spot. what happened. It's that sneaky frozen yogurt smoochers. You know, that's the problem. You can go to Sneaky, Sneaky's Frozen Yogurt Smoochers. It's Smoocher Z's Sneaky Frozen Yogurt. And yes, you can get the little smoochers. Of course, yeah. I mean, you know, now I understand now they got a competing place across the way that does the, that does the frozen yogurt called Throat Yogurt. And of course, they got some they got some great dessert foods. They got some, uh, some protein pudding, which uh, <laughs> I don't think I told a single one of you about that either. But the protein pudding, fantastic. You know, you want to stay healthy. Get you know a healthy snack here at the uh, at the racetrack. That's always good to see. Uh, looks like the lights are off on the pace cars. This is probably going to be our last lap around under caution. Uh, we're at lap 15 of our 67 lap race. As we are going, things things are going fine here. The Cover Girl 500 here. The first race of the playoffs. Enios Barina leads the pack, and it looks like we got all 32 cars still on this racetrack. Nobody has uh, has seen anything of uh, of a short of a short day so far, which is good to see, because you know we want this competitive for the playoffs. But uh, fucking hell, it's the sneaky frogs that catch you every time. It is the sneaky smoochers. Got to watch out for them sneaky smoochers. I remember going to a baseball game and I saw they had someone. I think she was called the sneaky smoocher. She'd run up there and kiss one of the baseball players on the lips, and sometimes a little bit lower, like below the belt. But you know, it's it's all good fun in the in the in the minor leagues. You know, the sneaky smoocher, I think, right? <clears throat> I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might have just been the right. I, Wait, <laughs> someone's telling me it was just called the kissing bandit. Well, I think if they called her the sneaky smoocher, we'd be marketing the shit out of that. All right. That's right. <laughs> Green flag racing, 15 in the books. That means 40, 45, no, 15 in the books. That means 52 to go. 
and Jean-Paul Henri right on the bumper of Ennio Spirina as they are racing their way through this track, the RuPaul's Drag Strip here in Boys Town, Illinois. Jean-Paul Henri staying at the front of this pack. No one has really been challenging that Ford car. Ennio Spirina has been the closest to it. Looks like Agent Toby Keith's looking for a bit of a challenge to get himself some big lap leading points. Don't forget the lap, the five points for leading the lap, the additional five for leading the most laps still in play. And that's gonna that could easily make a difference when it comes to the playoffs. <clears throat> Seeing everybody spread out really wide here. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the back of the field. They were getting really loose off of some of those turns. Looking at Paul Walker. Right now he changed rides this season. Got himself into the playoffs with that double zero Nihilist Arby's car. He has looked really good consistently, and he is not, not loose at all coming off that turn. We're going to keep an eye on that car. I think that might make a big difference. Yeah, that's right. You know, the setups, much like Junior Fight 2, they make a difference. Yeah, they do, especially, no doubt. Especially, especially in the middle of a race here. You know, it's all about the adjustments. It's just one, whenever the uh, the cloud cover goes away and is replaced by the sunlight, that, that, that changes the character of the track so much. So as a Diggler Cup crew chief and mechanic, you got to be flexible. you got to be averse, as they say down Absolutely. here in Bullets Town, Illinois. Flexibility is such a key thing at this point of the season. We're looking at Big Daddy Thibodeau slowly creeping his way up through the ranks he's in the top half of the field right now 14th and he was he was damn near in the first wreck of the race we were that's thinking right. he was possibly involved in it he was just at the back of the field that's all it was yeah of course he's uh driving his way up through the field here and let's see if he can get past some of these other cars they're they're not willing to give up their spots at the front of the field so damn easily I think if I'm, uh, my math is correct, my counting's correct, and he is just taking that low line. He's deciding to become a bottom for a split second, following Jeff Shanice, fellow playoff contender. Shanice dropped down to 12. He was running in the top 10 for a little bit. He's, he's still he's still close. He's in within scr he's within scratching distance. He's gonna make the pass here on Stumpy Lane in that number nine Gumboos Chevy. But Jeff Shanice, sometimes a little bit of scratching is what you need to get the action going. Along, oh yeah. along with a little bit of a. You know, you just got you got a little bit of biting and scratching, and that's what these drivers are going to be doing. They're going to be biting and scratching for every position. They Absolutely, can get. and just like we've seen the wrecks, we're going to go around every turn and see all the all the all the damage on the track, all the all the, the screeching tires. It's just like biting and scratching. If you ain't leaving a mark, I mean, did you really even do it? Did you really even try hard? That's how I that's see right. it. That's right. That's right. Every driver is going to leave it all in the car. They're gonna they're going to be sweating. Their their race suits are going to be. It filled with dried up piss, and most importantly, they're going to have uh, suspicious bruise marks on the inside Absolutely. of the neck. Oh, no doubt about that. There's going to be some cartilage damage in the neck region at the end of this. And we're looking at Woo Ba Bali. You know, that is a thing. Woo Ba Bali running in fifth place in this race right now. I think he might be in sixth once we come around again and see how they update. Uh, see at least one car, that 22 car. Uh, which was on, on the side of your screen says behind me he's actually moved up ahead. Did you get that, you get that email from, uh, from Beaumont? I no, did. Not one, no, not the one that says uh, grow four inches with all natural techniques. Oh, man, is he still this having is, computer issues? Uh, I think he might be, but uh, that's not the main reason why he's here. He did uh, send for me an email and he said to forward it to you. It says, uh, <laughs> just right. says, sign the petition. Uh, the petition, the word petition may be misspelled. I, okay, that must have been why I missed it. I think I got like one of them. Yeah. It, might, it might have been just misspelled to the point that it just it might have been picked up by my spam filter. Yeah. Of course, um, the way to spell petition is P-I-T-I-S-H-U-N. Of course. That's and how did he spell it then? Um, P-E-T-I-T-I-O-N. I, I don't even know that. I don't know either. That's fake. That's uh, fake. You know, that's that's the thing. Yeah, of course it's close enough, but, uh, but you know, Wubai Bala running in seventh place right now. He is, uh, he is, uh, he is, he's, he's doing pretty good. And again, you know, maybe, again, a strong, even though he's not in the playoffs, a strong finish this season could always lift up the spirits of Wubai Bala and all those 103 Hugger Oranges fans. Uh, right now, we're looking at Dirk Tanaka running really good. He's fending off Giacomo Giacomo in third. They are they are one two three with Agent Toby Keith, who again is not a playoff contender, but Agent Toby Keith may have some interest in the playoff contention because he's got two it's teammates. All, 
involved. It's all about it's all about what's at the bottom of Agent Toby Keith's red solo cup. No Let's doubt see about that. How deep in his reserves he can go. And Giacomo, Giacomo trying to go all by himself on that low line to make the pass on Dirk Tanaka. He's not going to go for it. He's going to stay right behind him and keep his speed up. 139, 142 miles an hour is the speed of our leader, Agent Toby Keith. But Dirk Tanaka, the top of the playoff contenders here in second place. And, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, to address a little, a couple of... Uh, a couple of, uh, of rumors here. Uh, the name Julian Pace came around a lot in the last couple of weeks about, uh, uh, you know, about entering the Diddler Cup. Uh, you know, I got I, I, a bit under, uh, there's been a misunderstanding because, again, that sounds like a person's name. But Julian Pace is an actual car. So, I mean, maybe we can have the Julian Pace car. Maybe that's a thing we do next year. But we can't have a car. This ain't not Rider, all right? We can't have a car just running on its own. Got to have somebody inside that car and, I mean, we need consent from Mr. Pace on that one, even though Mr. Pace is, in fact, a shoot car. And if that didn't make any sense to any of y'all, I'm sorry. I will explain it later. <laughs> but he is, in fact, going to win the race, accelerate and win. And he is Volagas, actually. Volgas himself. But Bowie Jessup, again, sad, sad uh, performance this season from the number 22 car. Uh, you know, put the car inside a car, I'm being told. That ain't a bad idea. Hell, shit, we might do that next year. We need an idea. That might be fucking, there's a car driving a car. Fucking, we've done a bear and a child and a horse. What the fucking next? Why not? Yeah, let's have, let's have one of those little tiny clown cars, like a like Ford Festi. The car inside section. one of these. Shit. Hell, if someone could drive a bus, we'd have a bus in this goddamn race, all right? No, we, no, we put a bus inside of a stock car, inside of a Ford Fiesta. Inside of a turkey, inside of a chicken, inside of a duck. Or the other way around. Scratch that and reverse it. Roll look ham. That. Roll ham, indeed. Look at that. Speaking <laughs> of roll ham, look at that 81 car, Fat Daryl. Fat Daryl wanting all the ham. And uh, looks like... Uh, like petrol top off is dropping back in the uh, into the field had some trouble was all on the high line himself he's gonna slide in right behind right between Morris Mayfield and Paul Walker who will both drop back in the field may have gotten his speed back uh, petrol top may have maybe maybe it's con some contact gotten loose out of a turn he's gonna have to ride himself again but there's a lot of stories to talk about we're gonna be interested to see how the points shake out after this race 26 laps in of this six to seven lap race and Agent Toby Keith, still your leader. Giacomo, Giacomo in second place. Dirt Tanaka in third. Ennio Sperini in fourth. John Paul on your pole sitter in fifth. Picking up the 25. No, excuse me. Since it is the playoffs, it is now a $35 parts unknown, unknown wow. auto parts gift card. For winning the parts unknown, unknown auto parts all award. You can get yourself a lot of parts here in a parts unknown, unknown auto parts store. There are about 5,000 locations located nationwide. Inside a bag, you could get a spark plug for a uh, for a Chevrolet Chevette, or you can actually just get five more plastic bags inside of a plastic bag. That's amazing. You know, never know. And is something going to eventually be in that? Is something going to be in that plastic bag once you finally get down to the last plastic bag? It may be. It may be an air freshener, <laughs> or it just Maybe. may be another plastic bag. And and it's that's an air it. freshener that smells like cured ham. Cured ham. Well, Roll you need ham. to be cured by ham. Man, I feel. I feel like adjective foods after this between roll ham and cured by ham. Then. Uh, <laughs> They may have a whole new set of ham-based sponsors. That's right. And who said, I, I'll tell you what, though. Ham does have curative powers. It does. I mean, I mean, no one no one is debating the curative powers of the matted pork. That's right. It cures, uh, it cures <laughs> hungry. It cures hangry. It cures horngry. Horngry. I don't know that one. Or maybe I do. Yeah, th that's what happened when I, when, uh, when I was with Darlene last weekend. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I tell you what, it's not ham-fisted product placement, though. It is not. No, it is. Uh... It has been. Uh, it has been cured and brined and seasoned and flavored. 
It has all those things ending in T. And uh, roll ham indeed, all the ham. Fat Daryl in 17th place, moving past Smiley Van Buren in that 11 car. He hit the he hit the inside wall earlier on. Somehow is still on this track. He must not have been too bad of a lick, but he got spun out. <clears throat> Again, seems to be losing the pace. Fat Daryl trying to put the pass on Paul Alcohol. It's kind of surprising. Paul Alcohol not running at the front of this field like we kind of expect. I tell you what else is interesting. You look at the, right, the left hand side of your television screen here. You see, uh, you see what position a ninth Reverend Pastor Chavez got spun out in the pit lane. He's still got a fast car. He does. Tell Tracy Chapman he's got a fast car. He's running right behind Richard Blood in that 51 box of wine Chevy Prism. Reverend Pastor Chavez looking pretty dang good. You know, if I just kind of do some counting here, he is fifth among the playoff contenders. <clears throat> right now and he's right behind fourth so again you know you, yeah you're racing every single car in the field but you really just got to be incredibly focused and that's where your spotter comes in handy to remind you he's got a list in front of him of who is potentially you're racing up against and if we get down to that final race of this round we're going to be looking at the 10th 11th and 12th place drivers and they're going to be getting a little nervous as 13 14 15 and 16 will be doing everything possible to get themselves back into contention. Definitely. And if there's one thing I can guarantee in this playoff format, if you think the drivers inside the playoffs are going to race each other hard, think about how driver, how hard the drivers who aren't in the playoffs. Everyone want to play spoiler, not just by winning the races, but if they see a chance to deliberately take out another driver who made the playoffs instead of them, by God, they're going to jump at it. Yeah, there is always the possibility of revenge. As we see, uh, the lap down, first lap down car is being contended with it is 542 Norman, the 13-year-old of South Tucson Youth Motorsports, driving that number 13 Florida Georgia Lime uh, Dodge Stratus. He's just getting passed by Giacomo Giacomo, who lost a lot of time to Dirk Tanaka on that. Tanaka and Agent Toby Keith able to maneuver their way past, but there is a big gap now created by 542 Norman and it's going to be a lot of cars just trying to get back onto that pace <clears throat> Anio Sparina dropping back to 6th he has led a couple of laps Woo by Bala in 7th Reverend Pastor Chavez may have dropped back a little bit yeah he's back in that pack we're seeing uh, again Richard Blood and Reverend Pastor Chavez seem to have dropped back in there and of course 542 Norman the top 12 and Norman, who is a lap down, have created a bit of distance of about 2.2 seconds between 12th and 13th. 13th being Paul Alcohol, who is trying to take Big Daddy Thibodeau with him to get caught up. Yeah. This race has really built itself a rhythm. It's just a little bit clumsy at first, but afterwards, once you get situated, once you, once you become comfortable, it starts to build a set of rhythm. Slow at first and then quickening in pace as your breath just becomes more halted and frantic with each passing thrust you make through the traffic no doubt. and uh, each, each rotation you make uh, as, your, as your hips start to settle in the seat of the car and you complete mm. another racing lap <clears throat> no doubt about it and of course for all these drivers this is a brand new track for the diddler cup we didn't race here last year for every single one of their drivers this is their first time and you know you always remember your first time you're nervous That's you're right. sweaty you're just you're just trying to you're trying to make things work your and trying to weight, last as long as you can your knees are weak your arms are heavy and there may be vomit on your sweater already mom's spaghetti that damn yeah I know that sounds good up. you're like a poet didn't even know uh, I'm sorry who the, who the god damn somebody else already came up with that oh, it, it's fine on, that's fine you know that's all right you just go back to I mean I knew you know you know I I, I was I was thinking it was you, you could have just talked all about it at, you, you, re, you wrote you wrote your story about how you grew up outside of mile marker eight in Tuscaloosa and just right. you know, you know, I think Mile Marker Eight would have just made a really good name for for your biopic, your biopic. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mile Marker Eight, um, starring Lightning Lloyd Shivers as himself, Lightning Lloyd Shivers. Absolutely. <clears throat> Who would they get to play young myself as a child? Probably myself. Yeah, they could do that with like CGI and uh, 
and uh yeah that's right up and shit. these hates are fucking awesome man yeah they get computers and shit the internet magnets how do they work I ain't a scientist. I don't know how this shit works. Not at all here. We're seeing Reverend Pastor Chavez and Ricky Walton running 11 and 12 right now. Again, that er that early pack of cars, they're starting to drop away from Richard Blood a little bit. I think mean, they were racing each other a little too hard. Maybe uh, needed to uh, kind of work together to stay on pace. That's the thing. It's that delicate balance of having to... Uh, of having to... Uh, race against who you're competing with and maybe use him as a teammate to kind of stay on pace and, and improve improve yourself and it looks like Pastor Chavez has just kind of left Walton uh, in the dust a little bit and oh Pastor Chavez is going to go to pit road a couple of cars going to pit road this might be green flag stops it looks like we're seeing who's going there the leader's going in Giacomo Giacomo going to hang on to this lead because uh, he stayed out but Dirk Tanaka Agent Toby Keith El Matador Toto Rosanna, Reverend Pastor Chavez, all visiting pit row of that first pack of 12. We're seeing some other cars. Also, Cobb Salad, he was running uh, in the second half of the field. He is at pit road as well. We're going to see as these cars start to exit. And if my calculations are correct, uh, this app has encountered a serious error and will now restart. Oh, that's also interesting. The that and also, of course, the fact that we may have another pit stop left in this race. Maybe. That, that was what possible. I was trying to work out. That's possible. You know, they ran 37 laps before needing to pit. <clears throat> and again, a lot of those were under caution, so we may not have. If we go green to the finish, we may not have. Uh, we may not be good. They may not be good until the finish. That's, that's an interesting thing. It's going to be interesting here. We're halfway through the race. And uh, we're, we're going to see how this develops here. I think we're due one more round of green flag pit stops. But they can't have a caution early because everybody's just in it. Yeah, a caution right now would spell absolute doom for anybody who just pitted. As it looks like, yep, Jean-Paul Henri, who took the lead, is going to bring the rest of these cars onto pit road. <clears throat> and we're going to see what that will do for the lead of this race. Has anybody stayed out for two laps? Yes, it's going to be the 69 car of nice. Morris Mayfield. A nice strategy to get five big points and just hang out there for another lap. It's interesting how you can save fuel at a track like this. Remember, there this is a flat-out course. you got to be real committed. You basically got to be drafting off the back of every car you can look at. Because if you decide to lift and coast here, I mean, that's that's going to ruin your whole lap. No doubt about that. We're seeing these uh, these pit stops as they are coming out on the pit row. There's a race here. It looks like Ennio Sparini may have just beat Jean-Paul Henri off of pit road. We're hearing a lot of problems with a uh, with with a. Uh, with some of the with some of the, the the air guns here in the pit lane, it looks like they're just firing confetti that's shaped like a like a like two oranges and a cucumber. Oh, fair enough. Well, I guess that's a, maybe that's a new uh, that's a new sponsor like or something. Or I don't know. Maybe yeah, two two oranges and a cucumber. That sounds like some fancy smancy vegan brunch kind yeah, that's of joint. Yeah, gotta be what it is. I don't know. People around here seem to love brunch, though. I mean, I'm all fine. I'm all fine with the champagne in the morning. You know, you can booze it in the morning. It looks like Big Daddy Thibodeau had. Oh hell road. yeah! I'm all down for day drinking. Irresponsible day drinking is my middle name. <laughs> Lightning Lloyd, irresponsible day drinking shivers. Well, I had to just make not. sure that you weren't just reading, reading off a highlight. But you know, I think you're right. It looks like Morris Mayfield still leading this race. I am nice. absolutely gobsmacked as to what's going on because we are seeing a lot of cars a lap down. Looks like some of these cars still have not pitted just yet, so we're still waiting for this to shake out. The longer they stay out, the more of an opportunity they have to make up ground of the cars that had just pitted. That but is they, true. Can't, they can't run it out of fuel and try to stretch out the gas tank for every last and drop. Yep, here yes. comes that last pack of cars. It is Mayfield, Fat Daryl. Paul Walker, Petrol, Top Off, Kevin Boner, Pillman, Jeff Gordon, The Horse, and Jim Blossoms. 
So we're going to start seeing things shake out again. Say again. And Sorry. spanking. And spanking is stretching out the tank for every last drop. Bapist fuel stations are located in every corner of the good old U.S. of A. From the, from the rolling hills of, uh, of the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee uh, up to the, uh, the frigid uh, rust belt of uh, central Pennsylvania. Uh, all the way out to the arid deserts of uh, South Tucson, Arizona and the woodland hills of uh, Oregon. That's right. Wherever you go, there is always a beepus for you to put in your tank. Absolutely. Looks like we got problems. Kevin Boner Pillman, the first casualty of this race, uh, oh, took a header. No. I don't know what that means, but uh, apparently like had issues with the car, had to come off the track. I don't know what's going on there. We're seeing more oh, Schmeichel that come is back onto the track now. Devastating for his championship hopes here. Kevin Boner Pillman. I tell you what, that engine, it was just put through such a load, and unfortunately, that engine just blew its load all over yeah, the race. could track. not handle the load. That's the thing. Sometimes you just got to be able to handle it, and you cannot. Yeah, sometimes, it, it's, you know, you build an engine, sometimes you think you're eager to handle the load, and as it turns out, you just ain't. Hashtag spitters or quitters. That is our hashtag, of course, spitters or quitters. <clears throat> and looks like along Agent with our other hashtag goddamn auto race. Of course, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 the Covergirl 500. It's all about the hashtag. We should have announced it earlier on, and we're seeing the side the field side to cycle around again. Agent Toby Keith leading this race. Dirk Tanaka putting the challenge on there, followed by Bowie Jessup, Ennio Sparini, Jean Paul Henri, Wu Bala, Giacomo Giacomo in seven. <laughs> Ricky Walton in 8th, El Matador Toto Rosanna in ninth, and Paul Alcohol making a charge late in this race with what looks like 25 laps to go. That's right. Paul Alcohol Paul waiting Alcohol. for it. I'll tell you what, you could, you could crack a walnut with the neck here, with your neck from the G-forces you'll experience going through the corner. Man, Paul Alcohol was just sliding through the corners. He here. really is, Every and he got, you can saw he just lost a little bit of ground, got passed by Reverend Pastor Chavez, and all of a sudden there's three cars behind him, the 38, the number one, and the 51, and Richard Blood just caught up to him. So Paul Alcohol, man, you know, that's the thing. We haven't really been paying too much attention to, to Paul Alcohol really in this, in this race. We just noticed he was in kind of the back end of the field. If he's been handling his, if he's been dealing with a loose car like this and is still driving it in basically a top 10, potential top 10 finish, that just speaks so much of Paul Alcohol as a driver. It really does. And it also, you know, a lot of these drivers have been handling rough handling race cars. That's the thing. They've been set up to go as fast as possible. But, you know, I'm surprised we haven't seen more cars just step out on the back end and just spin right the hell out. You know, it's really surprising. We didn't see it too much. I, you know, I think that's good. I think they kind of figured out their groove. You know, again, it's like your first time. You're awkward. You're, you're running into stuff. You're, you're hitting walls. And you're just kind of, you're, 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 you're missing you're missing the mark. You're missing the proverbial hole for quite a bit of it until you finally get into the groove and it feels comfortable and then everybody's all wet. Of course, in this case, with sweat. But, you know, it, there is just a wetness. Oh, sweat. Everybody is just moist with anticipation uh, in this race. Jean-Paul Henri running in fifth right now. Wu Bai Bai putting the challenge on him. And we're looking at, let's take a look through the field right now, 44 laps in. Let's take a look at our 16 playoff contenders and how they fare. Dirk Tanaka in that number 99 slap mark Chevy Prism. There is our, he is our lead. He is in second place, but he is the highest. He is going to push for the lead right now. He's going to lead this race coming around, starting lap 47, 46 laps in. 21 to go. With a huge slide job up the inside. Yeah, oh, good, good slide job there. You know, always, always a, a fan of a giant job like that. <laughs> and uh, he may lead this race. He's got a big pack of cars following him, but he's going to try to hold it on for another. For again, he's already won the five points, I believe. But he's going to try to push and see if he can lead a couple more laps. I don't know if he's got enough that he can maybe do it. But they're lining up, coming around with basically 21 to go. 21 to go. Dirk Tanaka is in the lead as far as that goes. Then we go all the way down to fifth place, Jean-Paul Henri. Again, yet to get a win this season. But as far as points goes, he's looking pretty darn good. But again, those wins matter when it comes to the playoff points. You see, That's he's right. sitting in 14th Dirk, place. 
Yeah, Dirk Tanaka, if he wins this race, if he's able to hold these cars off for just 20 more laps, 20 and a half more laps, he is into the round of 12. It's he that is in simple. the second round. It's that simple. You just got to win and you're through. And that's all it takes. John Paul Henry sitting in fifth. Then we go down to seventh place, Ricky Walton. That number Ooh, 32 time guy, Temecula Dirt Car. You want to meet me in Temecula? He's moving up to sixth place right now, putting the challenge on Jean Paul Henry for fifth. Ricky Walton been up and down all season, but he's maybe starting to figure it out. He's going to have a good. He looks like he potentially could have a good finish here with 20 to go. Then we go down to the 35 car, Paul Alcohol, a perennial favorite. He is always a threat. When he's got good equipment, he hasn't had the best equipment today, but just imagine what he's going to do with good equipment. He is sliding in right behind Henri. There is a challenge that we saw from last year's finale. It was the 35 and the 40. Oh, both just got very loose on that turn. They just both held it together. Amazing, amazing thing. And up yeah. at the top of that list is Giacomo Giacomo. The War yeah, Machine want... Sandwich. Yeah, you don't want you, – you, you always – it's interesting to be sandwiched by, between two Berlin members of War Absolutely. Machine racing. You know, it's uh, it's something that most most drivers always fantasize about but never actually get to play out in person. That's true. You know, and so once that, sometimes when, when a fantasy like that is actually uh, lived in real life, you know, you, you, you can't you, – sometimes you just aren't able to handle it. But uh, that just showed that Jean-Paul Henri can handle any sort of fantasy if his fantasy involves – basically being a diddler cup champion you know it's always been a fantasy of mine to be a oh, whoops sorry wrong page here oh yeah, man yeah, that's, uh, that, that's fair <clears throat> that's fair but uh nonetheless let's keep going through the field in 10th place red bring pastor chavez in that 33 car the road, road course specialist he's gonna be happy yes. to see a road course on this uh on this schedule uh yes it, but it's gonna be in yeah he is sponsored by the yes convenience stores uh, for Mr. Naga's most glorious, uh, most glorious motorsports, he's the only Toyota Yaris in the playoffs, the only of uh, MGM racing that is uh, mo most glorious motorsports uh, in the field. It ain't, it ain't no Metro Goldwyn Mayer. No, no, not of that one. We can't get sued for that. Then we go over to Jeff Shanice of the Jeff Chinese 38 Independent Team. The that Iron Jeff. Prison. The Iron Jeff himself. The you know, invincible man of automotive vehicular carnage. <laughs> you know, no doubt about that. You have, you have just talked about that man himself, and man, what a good, what a good look it'll be for this independent team. You know, if Jeff Shanice has any sort of uh, delusions of grandeur or any sort of goals of building an empire in the racing, uh, in the racing business, then man, he is putting on a show of what he can do, what he can absolutely do with a racing car and basically his own team and say, I can do it my way. I don't need to join one of your Namby Pamba racing teams. That's right. Teams. That's right. I can do you it know, myself. He can do, he can do it his own way and have his own string quartet introduce him in the driver introductions as he rises up from an <laughs> elevated platform all and by himself. Does. And right behind him, Richard Blood. Again, we've talked so much about Richard Blood. Doesn't look like he's going to be have a car to win this race unless something completely chaotic and catastrophic can happen, which, of course, let's not put past anything there. <laughs> let's not put that past us there. That could potentially catastrophe happen. Catastrophe is our middle name. Yeah, catastrophe is our middle name. Uh, nonetheless, uh, he is putting the moves on. Jeff Shanice right now looking to gain a spot. And again, at this point, it's just trying to solidify yourself in that top 12. You just got to make it work for the time being. Make it work, spelled W-E-R-K, of course. Big Daddy Tipido sitting right now in 14th place in that number 60 car. Again, there's a bit of a gap between 13 and 14. He's trying to just pull himself ahead. He's got Vitala Kriptoff right behind him and Morris Mayfield in that 69 car. Five nice. big points for Morris Mayfield. He sits at the bottom of the playoff points right now uh but nonetheless five plus uh five qual five points for leading the lap and oh Thibodeau sliding way up the track not sure what that was all about but uh he just he's gonna slide right in behind uh oh almost made contact with Paul Walker in that double zero car let's keep an eye on that that was gonna be the next person we were talking about Paul Walker and Morris Mayfield almost got into each other and of course behind them Petrol Tom we got a big old big old uh cadre of playoff qualifiers in yes, there, the 69, 60, double zero, and 90. Nice. Yeah, they're just running a train here from the, really from the front of this pack to the bottom. 
And they're getting really loose out of those turns. We're going to have to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Dirk Tanaka continues to lead this race. He's got Wuba Bala sitting in second place right behind him. Look at that. 0.172, the interval. And Paul Alcohol, while we were talking, Paul Alcohol has moved up to fourth place in this auto race. He's got Agent Toby Keith behind him and Ricky Walton as well. But again, as far as it's going, uh, the placement of our playoff drivers, Tanaka, Alcohol, Walton, Henri, Giacomo, Shanice, Blood, Pastor Chavez, Kriptoff, Thibodeau, Mayfield, Walker. I said Kriptoff, excuse me. Kriptoff is not in there. I meant top off. Sorry, the Russians don't look the same to me. They all blurry in their photos anyway. That's right. <laughs> They're very, very blurry in the photos, man. Except for the bear. I mean, the bear is a bear. We know who the bear is. That's right. We, of course, know who the bear is. We know who the horse is. We know who the 13-year-old is. <laughs> They're we the think. easy ones to figure out. It's everybody else that just I don't fucking know. And Paul Alcohol has moved into second place. What a time to put a good run together. He is having some good late runs in this race. He's going to be challenging for the lead. He is going to be pushing to try to pass Dirk Tanaka. He just might do it coming out of this turn. Oh, he got really loose in that turn. Oh, he just Damn. handled that car so perfectly. He saw the back end just kind of, the, the front end kind of got stuck. The back end started to wobble, and he just ratted that one amazingly. If, if he can pull together a win, it will just be uh, it will just be a testament to how good of a driver Paul Alcohol is. But do they need to pit one more time? That's, That's the, the thing. We, that we is saw the question. Them. Yeah, they may need to pit just one more time, and it may come down to one more round of green flag pit stops unless somebody just decides to wreck all of a sudden, and this could end up with a with a last handful of laps dash to the finish. No doubt about that. Either way, this race is going to reach an explosive and very messy climax. Yeah, no doubt about that. The climax, it's best when it's messy. Look at Paul Alcohol giving up the spot to Wu Ba Bala. I think he'll just go ahead and, you know, I don't want to do give up too many spots at the late stages of this race, but he's going to slide right behind that 103 car, and Paul Alcohol is just going to hang on to this lead. You know, especially if he's, if he's worried about getting loose coming out of the turns, you want to just kind of find a drafting partner and just stick with him. And make sure when that back when that back end of the car starts to wobble, baby, wobble, that he doesn't, and he just seems to just slide down to the bottom. Again, going side by side, he is really trying to push hard to get back into second place. Meanwhile, his teammate is way back far, way far back there. He's about a second behind him, Giacomo. Giacomo, he's starting to fall off of that lead pack, which has now dwindled down to eight cars, nine if he's still part of it. But Giacomo, Giacomo... Having trouble keeping pace. You can see that distance starts to be created. He's yet. running out of time because we got 10 laps to go now. We are on 10 laps to go. <clears throat> Lap 58 of 67 right now. Dirk Tanaka, your leader. Paul Alcohol less than a tenth of a second behind him. Woo by Bala, Jean-Paul Henri up to fourth. And Bowie Jessup. That's your top five. We are looking at one, two, three, six out of the 10 of the top 10 drivers are in the playoffs. Plus, we got basically 11 through 13 and 15, 16, 17 all in the in the hunt. So, again, uh, big, big problems right now. We're looking for guys at the bottom. Kevin Boner-Pillman, this is going to be an act absolute uh, disaster for him. Uh, yeah. Not a good start to this, to this playoffs for Kevin Boner-Pillman. Also looking at Joe John Winchester had trouble earlier on in the race. Jim Blossom's down in 23rd, not out completely. But, you know, not a good the, way you want to start your race. It's the time of the race where you just where you can't afford to base and miss it. You have to be the dominator out there. Absolutely. You have to. You have to. If you if you have to bite and scratch and claw and pull somebody's hair and put somebody in the wall to get in front of the field, you do it. Look, sometimes you just need to just bite down on that bit that has been placed into your mouth or that little ball thing that's been strapped around you and forget about any sort of safe word you know. It is not the time for safe words. It ain't the time for it. We are down to just about, we're gonna be coming around with eight laps to go and a lot of wobbling. Not seeing anybody coming to pit road. Again, they're wobbling off the turn, but uh, nobody is. Look at that pack of cars. That is Bucket Dushine who is a lap down and Dirk Tanaka has fallen off the pace and Wu Ba Bala oh. had the lead for a split second, but they were contending with Bucket Dushan, who is a lap down. 
And so is. That looks like that is the, the and so much look chicken. Who's that is coming that. up in the second place. It's John Paul Henri. Alcohol and Henri are one, two. Look at this. This could be all the chaos we have come to expect. The 82 car Harry Gunt got in the way. The so much chicken car. And it now looks like it is alcohol. Henri Bale as they cross with seven laps to go. We are on lap 61 of 67. Seven laps to go. It is the 35 of Paul Alcohol. Two wins on the season already. He will be, I think, I think at this point, this would make him the uh, the all-time all-time race lead, all-time race win leader in race wins of uh, the Diddler Cup in our two-year history. Uh, we have to double check that one, of course. Jean-Paul Henri right behind him. Man, that would be a great shootout for the win in this one. It's a spot in the second round and I think that would matter so and much look more. At the man, and look at the man who's playing spoiler. Woo by Bally in the 103 Hugger Oranges car. He is I tell right you what, he was him. so disappointed to miss out on the playoff spot, but uh but he's got the heart of a champion, the balls of a horse, which are very appealing, these big heavy balls of a horse. Absolutely. Woo big, by Bally. Heavy balls. I understand, Mich I understand uh, uh, the namesake of the Sunday I talked about earlier. Michelle Visage loves Hugger Oranges. Just a big fan of that logo. Just a huge, huge, massive uh, fan of that. And we're seeing them come around again. We are down to six laps to go. This is the interesting thing. Jean-Paul Henri sitting in 14th place coming into this race. Paul Alcohol, first place coming into this race. Paul Alcohol is looking to play spoiler. I think Paul Alcohol could be pretty safe with a win here to uh, to make it with even without a win to make it to the next round just by the fact that he is sitting at the front of the pack with five to go five to go he could play spoiler to Jean-Paul Henri because Henri gets a win and he's in and he just immediately jumps right up to the front of the pack Paul Alcohol could prevent that a very threatening competitor in Henri that is the strategy of this now going to get so so close here it's going to get it's sloppy it's going to get close it's going to be so interesting to see how this shakes out Bala is in second Henri right behind him you gotta wonder will Ruba Bala maybe intentionally or unintentionally help one of these drivers he's racing hard with Henri right now but you gotta believe I tell you Bala what you, you gotta watch you gotta watch for the inseminator this man will not submit no, he will not. Even if he wants to. <laughs> even if it is even if it is legally and medically advised that he do it. He will not. No <laughs> tort order, no medical document, no hospital discharge, no enforcer of the law will tell this man that he can stop. We got the top five running together here. Paul Alcohol, four laps to go coming around that turn again. Let's watch as he has to handle that turn all that all that getting loose in the back end has seemed to have uh seems to have gone away as jean paul Henri trying to race for second place again he's going to start slide back into third and he's actually going to drop off a little bit third place with three to go and agent toby to is putting a run on him and paul alcohol is going to be driving out of his damn mirrors trying to block Wu ba bali anyway and that's of course very very, very dangerous when you know a driver of the aggressive acumen of Wu Ba Bali. Absolutely. We're keeping an eye on Wu Ba Bali, who is right on the bumper of Paul Alcohol with three laps to go. That is the thing. A win for a non playoff driver means that no one automatically qualifies. He could play spoiler to all 16 of these drivers, and you know Wu Ba Bali would absolutely love that. He got a little loose. Oh, he's heading to pit road. Oh, Him and oh, Agent oh, Toby oh, Keith are heading to pit road. Oh, are they out oh, of fuel? What's happening? Oh, my goodness. Reverend Pastor Chavez they're also, they're also going to pit road. What the, what the hell is happening? They must oh, be out of fuel. Goodness. Are they out of fuel? Who else is out of fuel? I don't know. We're oh, keeping an eye on it. But it looks like it is just, it is Paul Alcohol all by himself with 1.4 seconds. To and that go. goes against Wu Ba Baba's strategy of we ain't pitting. Amazing. <laughs> I don't know what sort of convincing he needed to get, but Eddie Osparina in second right now. Jean-Paul Henri, but here's the thing. They can they got two laps to try to catch up to an all-by-himself Paul Alcohol. They got three cars in that Pelican of sorts. Boo and Jessup and Jean-Paul Henri 
And Ennio Sperina trying to make a push on. Ennio Sperina, they just gained half that time on Paul Alcohol with one lap it. to go. Watt one flag racing. Watt one. flag racing right now. Paul Alcohol has just taken the white flag. Finish. And he it's may be the just have to do it. He may be doing it. He may be doing it. It's gonna come. It's gonna come down to all over his neck, his face, his chest. It is gonna be. I mean, that is the thing. Paul Alcohol making the turn, adjusting his neck, his back, his pussy, and his crack. And Paul Alcohol gets right behind Wu Bali, who came off a of pit road. Paul Alcohol has advanced to the second round with a win here. At Boystown, Illinois, and RuPaul's Drag Strip, what a race that was. What a race, what a performance there by Paul Alcohol just staying in there and coming through just when he needed to in the final laps of this race. What a finish. What a finish that was. And wow, we are looking at how these playoff cars have just uh, have shaken out Reverend Patrick Chavez had to pit out of fuel did anybody else yet no nope, that's about it just kevin boner pillman out of the race but that is just absolute agony for patrick chavez he dropped a lot of spots in that one oh, but as we look through goodness. the field our top 10 alcohol in first look at our playoff contenders Henri in third walton in fifth Richard Blood, Blood in six. six. Huge performance by Richard Blood. Big That'll move. Big Thibodeau in seven. And Jeff big one. Wow. Yes. Man, the playoff, the playoff drivers just started to show up at the very end. Look at that. Giacomo, Giacomo, Petrol, top off. Morris Mayfield, but, Paul Walker, all in the top 12, that early pack. But, but I'll tell you who that's devastating for. That's devastating for Dirk Tanaka, who led late in this race, for Reverend Pastor Chavez, who almost came back for a top 10 finish despite being spun out in pit lane. That it is. It is really unfortunate to see that. But nonetheless, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and get on. Are we getting race radio going with uh? With All Paul right. Alcohol? Yes, we got it. We got inside this car. We got Paul Alcohol in the number 35 bathhouse. <laughs> bathtub. Bathhouse gyms. Bathtub gin. Bathhouse, bathhouse, bathtub, bathtub. Paul Alcohol. <laughs> What an exciting race you just had. There we here. go. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, yeah, we won it. Yeah, we did it. Oh, man. Yeah, no, look at this. You win the first race of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I got a. Uh, we came in this race, Jack. They only weren't going to have a really quick car. Uh, the car was just a job to go out of the race, but I'll tell you. This was, this was a hard fight victory. I want to thank everybody at Bathhouse Gyms, Bathtub Gin, everybody who wore machine racing, put together a hell of a car, and it's time to go put it on that big pal! Well, he sounds very excited. Uh, L Lloyd, uh, Paul, you know, it, it's amazing to see, you know, you, you, you seem to have so much, uh, such a, such a difficult to handle car this, uh, th th in this race. Uh, how, uh, how did you, how were you able to just hold it all together? It reminds me of the times driving through Long Island. Uh, back when I was a kid, and all the snow was on the road here, you didn't have snow tires. You were just uh, shacking it through the corners every way which you can. Uh, sometimes the brakes didn't work, and maybe I hit a few cars a lot of the way, but it's fine. It's fine all the way, you know, as we gotta, gotta win the playoffs and, uh, we're excited. We're hot in the round of 12, and we're going to take this thing home come the final race of the season. We just know it. This is the hell of a week, guys. That's all for people! Well, well all, 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 all right. Uh, that man needs a throat loss in some time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Holy hell. That I is, don't think uh, he need, I don't. I don't know. I don't think even a throat lodgings will take care of that. No, I don't think so either. I mean, I, I love the hell out of it. In, in, in a certain way, it's endearing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think so. I'm good. Jesus fucking Christ, is that man all right? I think he's just fine. He, after all, just won the Diddler Cup race, and he's on the round of twelve. Yeah, that he is. He is automatically qualified. Uh, that is, that is just a huge, huge uh, thing to talk about. Again, 
you know, we are looking at it here. We've got just such a an amazing, amazing performance. What in the hell is happening here? Sorry, just kind of looking at something here. I'm trying to figure something out on my, on my end here. Uh, what in the fucking hell just happened? Yeah, we're good there. We're good there. We're good there. Yeah, all right, we'll figure this the fuck out. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Well, what in the fucking... What, what a race for Paul Alcohol. He is already uh, qualified for the playoffs, uh, for the next round of the playoffs. It is a huge, huge win, a huge weight off his shoulders. He don't got to worry about how he runs the next two races. Yeah, that's a that's a huge relief. Now we can just drive like an even bigger asshole to everybody else that's trying to make their way in the playoffs. No and doubt that's the about best. That. That's the most satisfying family in the world when you don't have to give a fuck about anybody else other than yourself. <laughs> that's a that's a liberating feeling. You are you are absolutely right. I think you are, I think you are onto something there. Uh, that is just huge. That is just a huge huge. Uh, a huge, uh, uh, amazing thing on him. Uh, we're looking at our playoff uh, picture right now. I'm just kind of getting an eye on this. Uh, we're seeing Paul Alcohol obviously has made it all the way to the, uh, has already qualified for the next round. Jean-Paul Henri has just jumped up to second. Giacomo Giacomo in third. Ricky Walton in fourth. Richard Blood, Petrol, top off. Paul Walker, Big Data Thibodeau, that's your top eight. Jeff Shanice in ninth. Morris Mayfield, Jim Blossoms, Dirk Tanaka in twelfth. Joe John Winchester, 13th, Reverend Pastor Chavez, 14th, Cobb Salad, 15th, and Kevin Boner Pillman down in 16th. That is oh. your playoff picture as we speak. We can't get the scroll going right now, but we're going to go ahead and get that worked out and fixed uh, so you can go ahead and see that in the future. Uh, this whole playoff thing is still kind of new to us. We're still trying to figure this the fuck out. Uh, let's see here what we're looking we at. We figure it out as we go. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do it live. Uh... Is, is how I see it, as far as I'm concerned. But, roll ham! Uh, roll ham, indeed. Abso-fucking-lutely. Roll ham. Uh, fuck beef! Fuck what? Fuck beef! Excuse me? Fuck beef I mean, and yeah, chicken, sure. too. Delicious ham. I My mean, sure, why the fuck alive. not? <laughs> fuck beef. I thought that was another product for a second. Holy shit. Oh my god, well I guess that's what's happening here as we are going ahead and uh, I'm just kind of double checking something here. So yeah, there we go. Okay, I think we may have had our scroll thing figured the fuck out here. Finally, let me go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, Paul Alcohol has won this thing. Yep, yep, yep. There's our uh, there's our playoff uh, standings. Yep, there we go. Okay, uh, let's see. How the fuck did I do this before? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But uh, oh, meantime, yeah, yeah. in the meantime, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this all the fuck out at some point. Uh, Larry Wood! What's that? Larry Wood, get over there. Okay. Yeah, Come we'll on, go man. ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, it's now, time how do we get this, uh, and... this clip, clip? How do we get the hell? This clipboard. This uh, paper clip filler? I, wanna, I just want that motherfucker to go away. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and figure that out in a second. I think we've got a couple of... Uh, the most important things we got to look at here are the uh, the wrecks. That's We we had two big wrecks here <coughs> early That's on right. our race. Okay. But I think it is time to go ahead and uh, find out exactly what in the hell happened in that early, early in that race. I'm going to go ahead and find it out myself. <clears throat> Like we were racing under uh, a caution hit us on the uh, was the caution early was it was the caution on lap yes one? we did yeah we had it on uh, we had it on lap two I'm gonna go ahead and see the race it was together very right very now. very early in the race here okay they're still racing together right now I'm trying to see I'm watching 542 Norman in monitor right now trying to find out where in the hell it all happened there it was oh good God found oh, yeah. it. Found it. There it is. It was on lap number one of this race. And, oh, my goodness. I think it was actually involved Jim Blossoms. Oh, my goodness. Oh. We're going to go ahead and oh, say, Jim. oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. We're going to go ahead and watch this right now. Let's go ahead and bring it down here. We are looking at this right now and seeing what is happening with Jim Blossoms. You see, they're all starting to bunch together. Oh, Bucket Dushan. Oh, it was actually Bucket Dushan slid right into him. 
That's what it was. It was the 55 slid up the track into Jim Blossoms. Let's go ahead and watch this really closely here. He slides up the track, gets into him, and you can see it's just an accordion effect right behind him of all of these cars. Let's get a better view here. Oh, man. I yeah. tell you what. Damn. Damn, that's some good hit. That is some good hit. And we're going to see Bucky Duchamp again, who was the one that spun around. We're going to go ahead and see, because he seems to have been involved in all that wreckage. Uh, again, you know, got loose, I think. He was riding between the 22 and the 33 here. Slides up the track. There's no room to go. Hits Jim Blossoms. They just, uh, Jim Blossoms rided that car all right. And we're going to see what happened. Did the 82 get into his teammate there? I think the 82 got into it with his teammate. Uh, a little, a little, uh, yeah, of course they. Oh no, that was the bear. That's the bear. Excuse me, that's the bear. They prevented a. Uh, they prevented a much bigger accident here by remembering not to use the brake. You know, because if you use the brake, all you're doing is just uh, checking up everybody else behind you, and the cars don't have enough time to react. Exactly. That's that's the thing. You know, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how Doug Porcott was behind on that one. I don't think anyone really got into too much of an accident. No one got too much damage. We'll take a look at the bear as well, because I think the bear needs to... Uh, who is driving? Bear is driving. How can that be? Did the bear actually get into any contact? Oh, yeah, got into it with the 82, and then just managed to hold it together. So there wasn't much going on there. But that was our wreck at that point. We're going to go ahead and take a look now. We had another wreck coming up. That was... Uh, we're going to look at it. Smiley Van Vuren, that 11 car, on, I believe it was lap number 12. That is correct. And I'm going to go ahead and get myself caught up to find it here. That's right. My wood. Roll that back. Roll yeah, that up. Are, are, he is rolling that beautiful bone footage. Got to love that bone. All the bones. Eat the bones. Just eat them. That's... Just eat them. Eat those just bones. A, just, your, your, your teeth are replaceable for a reason. Exactly. Okay, same... Seems to have been on lap 11. I think I missed it at some point. It must have been on lap 11 because I, I was seeing him already pitting and he's already at the back of the field. And I guess like a 542 Norman might have been involved in that wreck as well based on what I'm seeing. We completely missed the wreck. There it is right there. Okay, nope. Yeah, okay, yeah, there, there it is right there. Let's see what in the world happened here. So we're going to go ahead and pull this down and we are seeing. Okay, we are watching Smiley Van Buren all by his lonesome here. And right there, makes contact. Well done by Reverend Pastor Chavez for just missing that wreck completely. It was a lat tap. It just kind of spun him around and into the wall. Oh, oh, got caught up with Cobb Salad there. No, it took that was that was very strange. It just took a little bump to unsettle the car. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. I mean, I guess chicken and salad isn't that good of a of a of, of a combination after all. We'll see if it got involved and if if El Matador Toro Rosan was able to avoid that. Yeah, just able to. Just able to avoid that one. Cobb Salad just kind of, just kind of slid up the track a little bit. You see, he's got, he's got a little, he got a little bit of uh, air underneath, and he slid up, made contact with the 11. A couple of rookies, and there it was. The 11 just spun into the wall, and no other damage involved there. So pretty uneventful as far as wrecks go. But I gotta say, it was a goddamn auto race if I'd ever seen one. Wouldn't you agree, damn, Lloyd? Damn it is right. That is a damn good auto race. I'll tell you what. Um, I don't understand most of the culture around here. Um, uh, something about it is very off-putting. Not, not in an uncomfortable way. Just a, just a little bit of uncanny valley. Yeah, uh, I think so. I, I think I could lean into it, though. I think so. I think we can we can accept that. Well, well, we 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 of course are accepting. And, by, and I just gotta say, this is a great track to come to the, for, the, for the first time. I mean, we're glad. I mean, you know, we're glad that we both came. We hope you came as well and enjoyed and enjoyed coming. Uh, so you know, we're gonna we're, and we're gonna plan. We're gonna keep on coming, especially when it comes to this racetrack, RuPaul's Drag Strip here in Boystown, Illinois. Paul Alcohol is your winner. He is advanced to the round of twelve in the playoffs. We go to the Desolate Ellipse. For the Endless Monotonous Loop sponsored by Nihilist Arby's next week. It's going to be a big one. And then, of course, we finish off the round of 16 at the actual Roads of South Tucson once again. For uh, uh, We're going to have, I don't think we have a name for that race yet. I'm, I'm kind of hearing some stuff. 
I think that might be the uh, the Jesse James That's Dupree. It. Yeah, that, yeah, there have been a there have been a lot of uh, big name sponsored, but the the Jesse James Dupree. Yeah, that's gonna be the thing. The actual we're going to the actual. Oh, that that sounds exotic. I know, right? I'm excited for that. I'm I'm really that's excited like a, for that's that. That's like a that's exotic with a Y. <laughs> where where does the Y go? I'm kind of confused by that one. Where exactly does the Y go? Exactly where you think it does. I don't know where I think. I don't think I know where it goes. I'm confused as all hell. <laughs> Nonetheless, we will see. Because you. we're not going to get anybody in Haircut 100 to fuck us. We'll see y'all on the Nets and Satin Tiddler Cup <laughs> Racing Series events. <laughs> there you go. For Latin Lord Shivers, my name is Chip Chapman. We'll see you next time as we head to Hell, Michigan for the second part of the round of 16 in the playoffs. Paul Cajal is your winner. This has been the Diddler Cup. It has been a goddamn auto race. It's been a goddamn auto race.